I'm here with Dr. Dean Ornish, president and founder of the Preventive Medicine Research Institute and clinical professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. There is a study uh, in the Lancet Oncology. Can you tell me what the study evaluated? In our study, we looked at telomeres, which are the ends of the chromosomes that control cellular aging. They're often likened to the plastic tips on the ends of our shoelaces that keep the shoelaces from unraveling. The telomeres help to keep our DNA and our chromosomes from unraveling. And as our, as our telomeres get shorter, our lives tend to get shorter, and the incidence of the most common diseases like heart disease and cancer goes up. What were the specific findings of the study? We found that the telomeres actually got longer by almost 10% in the group that made these lifestyle changes, whereas they got shorter by about 3% in the control group. And we also found that the more people change their lifestyle, the longer their telomeres got at any age. And that's a very empowering finding and also one that helps give us more confidence in the validity of our findings. What are the lifestyle changes that are the most important to be made in, in, in your opinion? In all of our studies, we use the same intervention. It wasn't like there was one set of lifestyle changes for your heart and a different one for your prostate or your diabetes or your telomeres. It was the same for all of them. And they included what we eat, in this case, a whole foods, low-fat, plant-based diet, moderate exercise in terms of walking 20 or 30 minutes a day, uh, stress management techniques, including yoga and meditation, and more social support and love and intimacy. How is telomere length a predictor of biological age? Would you characterize this finding as the fountain of youth? No, it's not the fountain of youth, but it's certainly a step in the right direction. Until now, we thought that only telomeres could get shorter. Now we found that they can actually get longer. Other studies have looked at one moment in time and found, for example, that people who run a lot tend to have longer telomeres, or people who smoke cigarettes have shorter telomeres, or uh, women who are chronic caregivers under chronic emotional stress of taking care of parents with Alz Alzheimer's or kids with autism tend to have shorter telomeres. But they were just looking at one moment in time. In our study, we actually intervened. We gave people a lifestyle program. We had a control group to compare to. And we found that overall, the telomeres got longer in the group that made these lifestyle changes and shorter in the group that did not. The study found that the greater the lifestyle change participants made, the longer their telomeres became. How do you interpret those results? We found that the, the more they changed, the better they got. And that's a finding that we found in all of our studies the last 36 years for other conditions. We found the more people change their lifestyle, the more their heart disease reversed. For the first time, we were able to show that. We showed that the more people change their lifestyle, the more it slowed or stopped or even reversed the progression of prostate cancer or changed their gene expression. So these findings are giving us more confidence that what we observed is real. Why did you choose patients with prostate cancer? Are the findings relevant to other diseases? I think they are relevant to other diseases because we were looking at their blood, not their prostate tissue. In an earlier study, we looked at their tissue to look at their changes in gene expression. And because these were men who needed to be biopsied anyway for reasons unrelated to the study, that was one way to do it. But even then, we were looking at the normal parts of the prostate, not those that had cancer. But for the telomere study, we were measuring the white blood cells in their, in their bloodstream. And so I think these findings are relevant to a much larger group of people. This is the first study to indicate that changes in lifestyle may beneficially affect the chromosomes that affect cell aging. Why has this been so hard to demonstrate until now? Well, this is a very new technology. It was developed by uh, Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine three years ago for discovering telomerase, which is an enzyme that lengthens and repairs telomeres. And so because our findings, our studies were done in her laboratory, they have great credibility. How does this study build on the research that you've conducted over the past 35 years? You know, we tend to think of advances in medicine as being a new drug, a new laser, something really high-tech and expensive. And what we've done in our studies over the last 35, 36 years is to use these very high-tech, expensive, state-of-the-art scientific measures to prove how powerful these very simple and low-tech and low-cost interventions can be. Our bodies often have a remarkable capacity to begin healing themselves and much more quickly than we had once realized if we simply make the lifestyle changes that are really the primary determinants of our health and our well-being. Now that we have these results, what are the next steps that you'd like to see be taken? Well, this is a small pilot study, you know, and most research begins with pilot studies that need to be confirmed in larger randomized controlled trials over time. And I'm hoping that our findings will inspire and motivate other investigators to do just that. That's great. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much.